Did you know ASBN, America's Small Business Network, is now available on your TV? That's right. ASBN is now streaming on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire Stick, and available for download in the App Store. Scan the QR code to download the ASBN app today. Thanks for joining us for another edition of The Small Business Show with Jim Fitzpatrick, exclusively on ASBN.com. In today's business landscape, the ability to pivot can mean the difference between growth and stagnation. Pivots are essential to keep businesses thriving and adapting in an ever-changing world. Joining us now to share his perspective is George Deeb, author, Forbes contributor, and managing partner at Red Rocket Ventures. So, uh, George, what say you on this topic of pivoting? There's so many companies need to do, right? Well, you know, it's, it's amazing what a pivot will do because it could potentially move your business in a new direction where... You know, it might have been failing in one area and you make a couple small tweaks or maybe even a major tweak and it could put you on the path of success to success. So it's it's reimagining your business in new ways to kind of make a bad situation a good situation. Sure, sure. And when you speak about a pivot, give us an example of what, what you see as a pivot in a business. Yeah, there, there's a couple things. I mean, it could be a different product in the same market. Maybe the first product you took to market wasn't resonating and you needed to kind of tinker with the product and bring something else to market. Uh, it could be the same product you started with, but in a different end user market or different industry. Uh, maybe, it, maybe it wasn't resonating in the insurance industry, but it is resonating in the technology industry as an example. It could be just moving industries. Um, it could be tinkering with the revenue model, right? Maybe they didn't like you as a expensive enterprise software product, but they love you as a small business software as a service product. And you just changed your revenue model to kind of adapt to that smaller business market. When does a business owner typically know or realize that a pivot is required? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's when you see your customers are not coming in or your revenues aren't coming in. And, you know, you, you thought you had this great plan, you took it to market and something's not working right. Yeah. And, you know, oftentimes it could be sales and marketing is the problem. And you just didn't have the right sales and marketing plan to kind of be successful in your product. Uh, but if it's not sales and marketing, you, you know, you, you might need a pivot to kind of get the business head in the right direction. Sure. So having said that, how does one know if sales and uh, it, it, it's not the fault of sales and marketing? Well, if, you, if you're confident that you had a solid marketing strategy in place, that the you were going after the right audience, you had the right pitch, you had the right creatives, you had the right offer, the right team, et cetera. If, if all the smart brains around the table were confident that they had the right marketing messaging mm -hmm. and strategy in place and it just wasn't working, that's when you know that it's not marketing is the fault. It's the it's probably the product, and they aren't the customer isn't resonating with that particular audience. Sure, sure. What uh, what types of pivots should a company consider? Well, you know, it's it's whatever will kind of get the business onto the right ground. I mean, it might be helpful for me to talk through a couple examples. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, a couple come to mind. You remember the company Groupon, the Daily Deals yes. website, yep. where you had the tipping point where you needed 500 people to sign up for the, the deal in order for everybody to get the deal. Yeah. You know, it didn't start as a Daily Deals website. It started as a fundraising platform <laughs> with that same kind of tipping point technology okay. where if an investor was going to make the investment, they needed the 500 others to make the investment with them. So that was a that was a pivot from being like a B2B funding platform sure. to a B2C uh, you know, consumer marketing deals platform. Uh, YouTube started off as a dating site, if you can believe that. Now it's the number one website for videos and all things videos wow. beyond dating I didn't and know everything that. else. That's a fun fact. And, and, and TripAdvisor, you know, they started off as a travel search engine uh, where you'd go and book your travel and there was just a lot of competition in the market and they pivoted to becoming a travel reviews site, yep. you know, and content site where you can kind of get, you know, firsthand reviews of the hotels or the destinations of the activities. And that's when they took off because there was a huge void in the market for that particular solution. Wow. I know there's a company here that's headquartered in Atlanta called MailChimp for uh, email marketing, which they, that was a pivot as well. They were in the 
uh, business of building websites for companies. It, and uh, I guess one of their clients came to him and said, what can you do to help us build something in the way of email marketing so we can market to our company, our, our customers? Lo and behold, they come up with this great software or, or platform and they, they pivot over to that and uh, sell it for $12 billion 15 years later. So Pivots work, pivots work for yep. sure. Yep. Um, have you ever had a pivot or to, to make a, had to make a pivot in your own businesses? Yeah, there, there are a couple examples I'll share. I, I was running iExplore. You know, we were an adventure travel agency online. And, you know, our original business model was to sell the tours and get a commission on the sale like a travel agent would. Mm -hmm. uh, we found out that the most profit from our business was coming from the media sales uh, around the million unique visitors on our website. And we kind of pivoted into more of an advertising driven model because that was pure profit, right? There wasn't a whole lot of expenses on the advertising that was coming into the site. Right. As the travel business, I had to hire travel agents and it was a very expensive, hard to load the data, hard to manage the transactions, hard to keep customers happy kind of model. Uh, it was a good pivot to kind of get our profits propelled in the new direction. Uh, that's, that's one example. Uh, a second example, I was running a business called Media Recall that was providing uh, digital video services, kind of, you know, digitizing large archives of video content. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were taking it to the market as an expensive services model. And some of the clients were saying, I don't really have the budget for that. You know, are you willing to take a ownership stake in the content that you're producing and take your money on the monetization of those archives after the digital services work was done. And for businesses like, you know, the Johnny Carson archive, and you knew that that was going to come back to life and they were going to sell a lot of advertising around those impressions, that was a very smart model because yeah. they got their work done uh, in a way that they could afford it, taking it on a paper performance back end model instead yeah. of all. For sure. Oh my gosh, I still watch those today. I mean, that <laughs> that particular one, in fact. So, um, any final words of wisdom that can help, uh, you know, point a startup in the right direction in this area? <clears throat> yeah, I, I want to repeat what we said before. Before you do a pivot, make sure that marketing and sales is not the problem. Okay. Nine times out of ten, sales and marketing is the problem, and you just need to make sure you got the right strategy and the right team and the right message, the right creative, the right offer. That that's the first thing. So make sure you you've crossed all those T's and dotted all those I's before you throw the baby out with the bathwater. That's right. Uh, that's number one. And number two, if you are going to make a pivot, make sure you're leaning into your number one asset. You know what is it that makes you unique? What is your core competency? What makes you better than anybody else? and figure out how to reimagine that asset used in a new way, in a new industry, in a new end market, whatever it is. Yep, yep, great advice, great advice from the one and only George Deeb. Thank you uh, so much yeah, for joining us uh, on the show today. Very much appreciate it. I know that our viewers get a lot out of your content and your visits with us, so thank you so much. Thrilled being here, thanks for the invite. Thanks. Thanks for joining us for another edition of The Small Business Show with Jim Fitzpatrick exclusively on ASBN.com.